Hi, my name is Adina Begich. I'm a fourth year PharmD MBA student and I will be providing a brief review on carbamazepine. This presentation represents my own opinions based on the references at the end of this presentation. Carbamazepine is pharmacologically categorized as an anticonvulsant. It's labeled for use in monotherapy or adjunct therapy for focal onset seizures as well as generalized onset seizures. It's not effective and can actually increase the occurrence of absence, myoclonic, or akinetic seizures. It's also labeled for monotherapy in acute hypomania, mild to moderate mania, or episodes with mixed features associated with bipolar disorder. Finally, it can also be used for neuropathic pain, more specifically in trigeminal or glossopharyngeal neuralgia. An off-label use for carbamazepine includes maintenance treatment in bipolar depression. Carbamazepine has three major mechanisms of action that have been described. The first major mechanism is sodium channel blockade, which makes it effective as an anticonvulsant and may be helpful in subduing excessive painful stimuli. I will be going more in depth on this specific mechanism of action. Regardless of underlying etiology, all seizures involve an electrical disturbance in which a population of neurons rapidly and repetitively fires electrical signals. The, this electrical disturbance can be caused by 1. An excess in excitation by glutamate, 2. Failure of inhibition by GABA, or 3. A combination of both of these factors. In addition to an imbalance of neurotransmitters, there are also neuronal mechanisms that are responsible for seizures. Instead of firing a single action potential, neurons may experience a paroxysmal depolarizing shift, which causes excessively prolonged and repetitive neuronal firing. This results in multiple action potentials being fired. As we can see in the image, there are multiple fiber tracks that run through our brain and connect neurons that are both adjacent and distal to each other. These electrical signals can run through these fiber tracks and recruit normal neurons to fire abnormally um, and result in that paroxysmal depolarizing shift. Most anti-epileptic drugs, including carbamazepine, work primarily by targeting neurotransmitter imbalance and more specifically by modulating increased excitation by glutamate. Glutamate is released by the presynaptic neuron, travels through the synapse, and binds to postsynaptic receptors. Once glutamate binds, sodium and calcium membrane channels open and allow sodium and calcium influx into the cell. This causes an increase in positive charge entering the cell and results in depolarization and transmission of an excitatory signal. Carbamazepine, which is represented by those red X's, works by preferentially binding to inactive or hyperpolarized sodium channels and preventing sodium entry into the neuron, which prevents depolarization and therefore prevents the electrical signal from being created or transmitted to the postsynaptic neuron. It is important to know that carbamazepine specifically binds to inactive sodium channels, which are much fewer in proportion compared to the open and closed conformation of sodium channels. Therefore, at treatment doses of carbamazepine, neural transmission at normal frequencies is relatively unaffected. The second major mechanism of action that carbamazepine exhibits is agonism of the GABA receptor. This allows entry of chloride into the cell and prevents the generation of an action potential. This mechanism is thought to be the reason why carbamazepine exhibits an anxiolytic effect and is useful in the treatment of bipolar depression and as a muscle relaxant. The third major mechanism that carbamazepine exhibits is increasing the concentration of serotonin at neuronal synapses and this is thought to be useful in the treatment of neuropathic pain. In addition to these three primary mechanisms, carbamazepine is also found to have anticholinergic, antidiuretic, antimanic, antidepressant, and antiarrhythmic activity. Now that we have discussed the mechanism of action, I wanted to discuss the pharmacokinetics of the drug. Like many drugs, carbamazepine is absorbed from the GI tract, so anything affecting the physiology of the GI tract can affect the absorption of this drug. Um, the volume of distribution of carbamazepine in adults is about 0.5 liters per kilo. The volume distribution is larger in neonates and even larger in children, which indicates that higher doses of carbamazepine are generally needed in these younger populations to achieve peak concentrations. Additionally, carbamazepine is significantly protein-bound at 75-90%, to 90%, and its metabolite epoxide is only about 50% protein-bound, so it can enter cells much more efficiently. 
Carbamazepine is metabolized by the CYP450-3A4 enzyme to its metabolite epoxide, which is further broken down to transdiol epoxide hydrolase. And the half-life of carbamazepine tends to be at about 25 to 60 hours, which is longer compared to its metabolite. However, the elimination half-life does vary a bit as the drug does undergo auto-induction, which usually is completed at about three to five weeks after a fixed regimen. Carbamazepine does carry a couple of black box warnings. The first one is the warning for dermatologic reactions, including Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis. The risk for these dermatologic reactions is 10 times higher in patients with the HLA-B1502 allele. This allele is mostly exclusively found in patients of Asian descent, so it's highly recommended that they undergo pharmacogenomic testing, and if they are found to be positive for this allele, that they should not be taking carbamazepine unless the benefit highly outweighs the risk. Additionally, carbamazepine carries a black box warning for the ability to cause aplastic anemia and a granulocytosis. Here I have listed some of the most common side effects for carbamazepine, including dizziness, drowsiness, nausea, vomiting, ataxia, constipation, pruritus, xerostomia, skin rash, blurred vision, and difficulty with speech. Some other more serious warnings to consider and carefully monitor when using the drug include blood dyscrasias, cardiac effects, CNS depression, hepatotoxicity, multi-organ hypersensitivity, and hyponatremia. These next three serious warnings are more prominent in the elderly population, including activation of latent psychosis, confusion, and agitation, and then we have renal toxicity and suicidal ideation. There are some important things to consider when prescribing, administering, and taking carbamazepine. It does cause low folate and low vitamin B2, B6, and B12 levels. It is considered a NIOSH hazardous drug, so in administration does require single gloving and any manipulation of the drug requires double gloving, a gown, and uh, should be done in a controlled device. Some interactions with carbamazepine include that it may cause a positive TCA screening. It does interact with some pregnancy tests and it can lower the efficacy of hormonal contraceptives. Its use is contraindicated in the presence of bone marrow depression, use of MAOI within 14 days, and concomitant use with nefazidone or deliveridine. We have discussed um, special populations in which those dermatologic reactions are more prominent in patients with, in a, with um, patients from Asian descent, and uh, the elderly population has that greater psychosis, confusion, and agitation risk. And then finally, this drug has been found to cross the placenta. It is teratogenic and has been shown to cause spina bifida, craniofacial defects, and cardiovascular malformations. Any patient who is taking carbamazepine is encouraged to register on the North American Anti-Epileptic anti Drug Pregnancy Registry. It has also, this drug has also been found in the breast milk. However, the use of carbamazepine, as is the case with most other drugs, is not a contraindication to breastfeeding, and infants should just be closely monitored for signs and symptoms of carbamazepine toxicity. Finally, monitoring of carbamazepine levels can be a good idea in the first few weeks of therapy before a patient reaches steady state. Serum concentrations are typically drawn before the next dose is due. Other things to monitor include platelets, iron, liver and renal function, sodium, glaucoma, sedation, and rash. As a general goal for epilepsy and bipolar disorder, serum concentrations should be between 4 to 12 micrograms per milliliter, and the toxic level is anything that reaches above 15 micrograms per milliliter. Here are the references that I used here for my presentation. Thank you so much for your time and attention. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at adina.begich at drake.edu. Thank you.